Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, I'm Morielle. Today we're going to do a combination of a few things. We're going to do a new series I don't have a name for yet where I dig through my makeup collection and I use an old palette and I use it as the central focal point for a makeup look. It's kind of like a shot my stash but specifically for eyeshadow palettes that are no longer new to the market, things that have been kind of languishing in my collection a bit. A little bit of a shot my stash but specifically with an eye makeup focus. This was highly inspired by Geek Chic and I love her videos. I think her um, revisiting, like reviving old eyeshadow palettes collection is really really great. I also remember um, Emily Noel's series called I Remember and she stopped doing that but that's kind of a similar thing and the video is twofold because I'm also duping the vibes of the Pony Park and more makeup collaboration because that is something that I saw and my eyes went straight to the pastel, the makeup artist, the space theme and I was like oh my god I want that, I gotta have it so I figured we would you know kill two birds with one stone. If you want to know how I got this look which is duping the vibes and using an old palette, keep on watching we are getting into it right now. Okay so I wanted to pull up the actual picture of the palette here um, and I have it for reference in my little screen here. And what I wanted to do with the vibes of this palette, I wasn't actually thinking specifically about shade for shade dupes. Um, this kind of just came organically in my mind of the, like, the conception in my mind of what this palette is. But now that I'm actually looking at it, the palette that I ended up using, which spoiler alert, it's the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde, actually ended up hitting every mark. Like it, it actually, now upon closer inspection, it has every single thing that I'm looking for. And unfortunately, my palette is missing a lot of shadow because I have a lot of <laughs> pan in here. But it reminded me of why I really was appealed um, to this palette to begin with. So this is one of those big Morphe palettes that has the shades in the middle. It has the swirled marble shades, which um, I guess Huda pioneered, I believe, that she started that trend and then it started kind of getting popularity everywhere. But let's talk about some of the color families that we see in this. We see some soft mm, beigey golds, not a very yellow gold, but more of a neutral gold. We've got some burgundy tones, some warm peaches, nothing too orange, but we definitely have some like terracotta shades leaning into a little bit of red. We've got purple, both warm and cool purple. We've got a little bit of lilac, dusty lilac, dusty lavender. And at the very far right, you see some icy purple and icy blue. So it's not exactly shade for shade dupe wise. because There's a little bit of um, um, a missing rusty red shade in here, almost like a Mars dirt kind of red. We don't have that, but we do have this kind of purplish red. So that would suffice there. And we definitely have this really beautiful reddish duochrome metallic color. In terms of peaches, and terracottas, we do have this one here, which I feel like is very in line with the aesthetic. And we don't have an icy blue, but we do have a teal blue. And there are a lot of really pretty sparkly duochromes, some of these purpley blue shades. So, you know, I wasn't thinking about this when I was doing the whole makeup look. As you can see, my whole makeup look is done now. But upon further inspection, I can see that this was pretty much exactly what I was looking for, but in a better, nicer version, right? It's um, It feels a lot nicer, it looks a lot nicer. I, I have no doubt that the performance of the original Huda Beauty Shadows is way better. So in all accounts, I feel like this was very much so a uh, smashing success. I think I have a little bit of eyeliner or mascara on my eyes from last night, but that's okay. I'm not gonna let it stop me. <laughs> for today's base, we're gonna do what I've been loving lately. I'm really on a kick to use these all the way up. This is my Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense, and I have very, very little of this product left. And then I've been mixing it with my e.l.f. CC Cream in the shade 240W. And I don't know if you can see, but there's like clear, like you can see through the container, which is really something. So I put in a little dollop of the SPF and then I add, oh, that just squirted all over my pants, um, my pajama pants. But then I add in a little dollop of the e.l.f. cosmetic stuff and I use my uh, little foundation brush to get it all up in there. This is one that I picked up that has like a crystalline handle. I love it. It was really, really cheap. I bought it at Marshall's and it came in a set of like five, like five different face brushes. I'm going to use some of them today but I do like them. They're kind of like the Moda brushes, you know, like the cheaper synthetic brushes, but I really like them for base products because their ultra, ultra softness makes it really comfortable to blend all over the face. Yeah, it doesn't feel scratchy or irritating at all because the fibers are so soft. And I bought it um, earlier this week with my friend. We were out having a little girls, girls night and yeah, it was great. I tend to be a pretty not super, super social person, um, like I have a really tight circle of friends um, and we're all like really busy unfortunately So when I do get to go out with them, it is honestly so good and so healing and um, rejuvenating going into my Age rewind. I've decided to keep the little spongy guy on this because listen these don't last too long on me It's not like they last uh, you know over a year and It's just me using it. I'm okay. Like I've gotten over the fear of 
using a sponge tip. I feel like earlier, back when I was younger, I was like so anal about like germs and things being scary and blah blah blah. And like, yeah, it's not good to have germs on your makeup, but also it's just my face and I apply my makeup when my face is clean. Is the framing of this video weird? It feels like the camera is weird. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of chit chat and have a little kiki with you guys, nothing in particular. Um, I mean, I have some more serious stuff that's coming down the pipeline, but I kind of wanted to just have a day to sit down, kick back, relax, talk a little bit about makeup that's not new, makeup that's not in my project hand, makeup that's not in a shop my stash. You know, it's so hard for me to get through everything in my collection unless I am properly doing a video on it. And so I figured I would revive um, some of my products with a particular series dedicated to it. Going into my contour, I'm gonna use my favorite contour brush, which is the Worker Pro from the Lotus line. I got a notification the other day that the Milk Stick from NYX is like TikTok's greatest nose highlighting trend, and I just figured that was so ignorant. It was like, everyone is using the NYX contour stick in the shade Milk to contour their face. And I'm like, no, not everyone is doing that because not everyone is the right skin tone for that. I mean, that's just such a weird headline for them to use, and I just felt like it was really ignorant for them to use in our Lord's Year of 2021, where we understand that people are not all Caucasian, and not everyone is going to have a pale enough skin tone to use a literal white eyeliner stick to highlight their noses. So that was like a thing that I read yesterday, because I get um, push notifications from Google. I don't know why, but like the Google app sends me notifications. Um, and yeah, it was one of the things that one of the beauty bloggers on some website was talking about. I'm just like, yeah, I guess some people are using um, the milk stick, but to frame it like everyone is using the milk stick really just continues to perpetuate the idea that like the standard is white and very, very fair. And then everyone else besides that is not included in the umbrella of everyone. So that was just like a thing that I saw yesterday that was upsetting and I, I didn't really like that. Um, it made me a little bit bummed out. Today's episode of, I don't know what this is called yet, so please let me know down below what you would recommend. I wanted to use the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette just because this palette is um, something that I remember really, really, really loving and kind of beating to death as soon as I purchased it. I think I got it earlier in 2020 and then I frankly demolished it within less than a year. I mean, it was very, very quick that my passionate love affair with this eyeshadow palette unfolded and I panned a lot of the shades hit pan, I should say, hit pan on a lot of the shades relatively quickly. And ever since then, I've been trying to slow my roll down because I don't want it to completely, you know, go to waste, like not go to waste, but I don't want to use it up so quick quickly. Um, but at this point I'm kind of thinking and I'm like, hmm, would it be that bad if I just kind of use it a bit more, brought it back, you know, seasons are changing. We're kind of approaching winter now, believe it or not. And I'm just wondering if some of the cooler shades might be something that would work better now that we've got like a cooler older sister when I don't mean like cooler older as in like she's objectively um more interesting I just mean in terms of the color scheme Mercury Retrograde has more dy dynamism like it's got more color it's got more stuff going on and then the recent one is just kind of neutral and cool and so I wanted to kind of go back play with the other one see what the differences really are I mean I do know there's a lot of mats that are really similar in here but I'm thinking we could do something quite colorful probably with the blues and purples up here though I don't know I don't really have a particular vision so let's kind of hop in I'm gonna go into off balance with a big old fluffy brush and it's a really nice purple color and you can see that the shades perform really well I mean I love the Huda formula I think it's really quite nice and that's part of why I've always wanted to get the naughty nude because it's got a lot of really beautiful sultry burgundy colors but I just can't with the packaging. It's just so unappealing to me. And when something is unappealing to me on an aesthetic level, for something aesthetic, which is makeup, it's like entirely a, an aesthetic practice, I just can't, I can't get it up. Like it's a visual medium. If I don't like the actual product look, I'm not gonna buy the product, I'm sorry. That's just, you know, I don't need to buy makeup. So if I'm going to buy it, it's gonna be something that I like. And it's gonna be something that's cute. And when it's not either, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Call me childish if you want. I'm going into Momentum, which is kind of like a my skin tone, but a little bit brighter. And I'm just gonna clean up under the brow and diffuse that line a tiny bit. I've been talking about how I prefer a really bright under under eye, under brow highlight lately. And I still think it's true. It's not that I don't, but 
there isn't a color that is so frosty and so white in this palette that would work for me. And I think that's just my skin tone. If you had even a slightly darker, like a shade or two darker, I think this um, Momentum shade would work really well as a, a bright highlight color for there. Actually, I'm going to go one size smaller into a Sonia G Classic Crease. And this is really big for my eye shape, if you can see. I mean, for most people, this is probably a normal crease size brush, but for me, it's a still pretty big one. And I'm going to go into Hot Mess, which is an eggplant purple. And I'm just going to continue working on the purple here. And I've been on the purple train for quite a while, guys. I don't know if we remember, but it started back in September, I think, where I was really into purples. I don't know if you can see that my hair is lightening in color already. I think I'm going to color it again next week. Just because I like it vibrant. I like it pretty dark. Okay, I saw this hack on TikTok where you scrape some eyeshadow from the pan onto the mirror. So I'm using a little bit of ultraviolet, ah, like that, and then you spray it with a teeny bit of setting spray. And I used a single squirt of my Charlotte Tilbury one, and you kind of emulsify it so it turns into kind of a cream pigment. So that's what I'm trying to do, trying to get it like nice and creamy. And then let's see if we can use this as a cream shadow on the eyes. I've never tried this before, so this is gonna be like a, do TikTok hacks really work? Um, I'm gonna say the answer is no, because I honestly feel like this shadow is more foiled on its own than it is with whatever we've combined it with today. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't think that worked really well. Okay, it could have been because I used a dyed goat hair brush that this didn't work out as nicely as I would have liked, but I have used this particular Sony G brush with other cream shadows before, and it's not ideal, but usually it works out totally fine. That being said though, it's not a terrible result. I think because the formula of the eyeshadow itself is really good, and I'm going back in with my big old blending brush just to kind of diffuse the edges one more time. And I'm gonna go back into the original purple shade once, and I'm just gonna try to save this. I just think that there's so much more sparkle. Do you see when I use my finger? There's more sparkle and more shine. You can see that, right? There's physically a difference in the sparkle and shine when you use a finger. So I definitely wouldn't try the um, the setting spray hack with this particular formula. I feel like this formula really does well um, on its own. But that being said, we did hit a little itty bitty pan from uh, scraping the product out. And I used all the shadow. It's not like I left any. So yay, we hit another pan in this palette. I am honestly pretty stoked about that. I'm not going to lie. Let me sweep off some fallout because I did get some from that weird technique. And I wouldn't, not that I wouldn't do it ever again, but I, I don't recommend it. I don't think it's easier than any other process. Let's do the lower lash line. I guess there's no um, there's no dark blue. So we're just gonna do purple on the lower lash line. I kind of forgot to mention that the whole premise of this look is based off of the new Pony and Morphe collaboration coming out. Now I love Pony. If you've been around on my channel for the, the length of time that I have had it up, you'll know that I frequently reference Pony in intervals like throughout my channel's lifespan because I've always found her to be really inspiring. I find her artistic style to be really flattering and artistic. Um, she's one of those makeup artists that like clearly is into makeup and clearly can create really beautiful makeup looks, but doesn't feel the need to go overboard to prove her artistic talent. And I feel like I sometimes can be like that. Not that I'm like really artistic or I have that much talent, but it's more like I feel like I have to prove that I like makeup. And by doing that, I overcompensate by doing really, really elaborate makeup looks instead of just you know, doing something subtle and something cute and, and allowing the artistry and the cohesion to speak for itself. I'm always like, I have to have the brightest eyeshadow, I have to have the biggest eyeliner, and you know, I have to have a really strong effect to prove that my love for makeup is really strong. And um, following Pony all these years has really allowed me to take a, a much more nuanced approach to makeup instead of being like, okay, if you like makeup, then you're going to wear 50 layers of eye makeup. You, you can just like makeup and, and be subtle, it's fine. Not that today is a great day to demonstrate that I've learned that from her, but she is a great reminder. Her and a lot of other makeup artists, you know, professional makeup artists who do this for a living, um, they always remind me that just because you like makeup does not mean that you have to be wearing a full-on beat every single day, showing the whole world that, like, these are your skills that you possess, right, at every given point in the day. Like, you can be a little bit subtle, but overall, let's um, revisit this look. I do like it. I like how I pulled really purple. I did use this sparkling blue all over the eyelids and that's what's giving it that extra sparkle and of course my favorite color here which is called super moon which I have very very little of I basically panned the whole shade and um, I used this color on the lower lash line as well so it's kind of a monochromatic purple look I love this I feel like this palette is really good um, let me do my eyeliner my 
mascara and my brows and then I'll be right back. Okay, so speaking of Pony Park, one of the things that she does that I really love is she utilizes individual lashes really well. And I don't think I can do that really well, but I do wanna try. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my lashes here and I'm gonna cut them into a couple of different pieces just so I can get a couple of different wispy pieces that I can kind of put in and insert to make the middle of my lashes a little bit fluffier. First, I have to acquire scissors. I will be right back. Okay, so honestly, the hard part about this is getting these individual lashes onto my eyes without losing patience because not only do you have to cut your lashes into itty bitty tiny pieces, you then have to place the lashes one by one on your lash line without losing your patience. Honestly, this looks kind of bad, but that's my fault because I basically recycled a bunch of lashes that I didn't have um, storage for or pairs for, which means that they don't necessarily look the most even or the most good or the most natural. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of mascara to make it look like I got lash extensions and they're not just a bunch of like wily ass lashes that um that don't match together because that, that is essentially what I did. I just put a bunch of like lash scraps together and was hoping that they would look like lash extensions and I don't know that I achieved that effect. Um, but you can definitely see the lashes. I like how fluttery they are, but I don't like how they look messy as hell. Um, but I can't help what I've already committed to at this point. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh... They definitely have that like really tangled chaotic feel that you get when you wear false lashes um, and extensions, but you haven't necessarily taken care of them in a long time. So ugh, I'm sorry for the cheeks. I wanted to do a really light kind of pinky blush. So let me go find something that works for that. I ended up finding this one from um, the Sailor Moon ColourPop collection. This is called From the Moon. And honestly, mine still looks new, which is so exciting because this is probably two, year, two years old at this point, um, but they're still selling the restock that I purchased on ColourPop. So I have to imagine, even though it says that the shelf life is like six months or whatever, they don't actually stop making it in six months. I don't think that they've been making new batches this whole time. I definitely feel like they're not brand new. And I like this blush because it's quite pigmented. Like it looks pigmented, it's a really bright color, but it doesn't feel um, like super overdone. At least to me, it doesn't feel super overdone. Maybe this is like way too much blush for most people. It probably is way too much blush for most people, but for me, this definitely is a tolerable amount of blush for me. And um, especially if I've got a heavier eye look and some lashes on, I'm more apt to wear more face product. For highlight, I'm gonna go for a Shop My Stash favorite lately. Because this has already been a rediscovered favorite from my stash, I'm gonna go into it. This is Blinded by the Light from Too Faced, and it is very blinding, and I do know that that's very cosmic looking. I do like that effect and I do think it's on theme. It's thematic. I wonder if like Gen Z kids or Gen Alpha kids who are getting into makeup, I wonder if they're like, oh, highlight. It's like so millennial. Like we don't really do that anymore. I wonder if they look at people like myself who do highlight and they think that's a really aged look. I don't know. If you are under the age of 18, let me know. I do know there's like a handful of kids who are still in school, who are into makeup, who watch my channel. If you are someone who is of that age demographic, let me know if it's like not cool to wear highlight anymore because I feel like that's what I've been hearing online. All right, for my lips, I wanted to do something that Pony made. So I'm gonna apply this and then I'm gonna take it off because it's really dark and then I'm gonna mix it to make it more toned down. But I did wanna be in the realm of like Pony Park makeup. This is one of her Pony Effect lip stains. And I love, I actually really love this color and I really love the formula, but it smells like cayenne peppers. It's so weird. It definitely has um, kind of like a cayenne pepper and vinegar scent. It's bizarre as hell. Okay, so this is the look with the cayenne. Okay, so this is the look with just the cayenne pepper. I'm gonna go in with a nude lipstick just to like tone it down a little bit. One trick I have for toning down colors is actually to use a gray lipstick. So this is one that I have from Revlon and I'm just going to kind of blend it in. And I know Pony is a huge fan of using a lip brush, so that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, and with that, we've got the whole face settled. Let me set my face, and then I will see you back here when we're all done. All right, guys, this is the look. How do we like it? My face is still a little bit moist, so don't mind that. But overall, I definitely feel like I achieved a very galactic vibe. Um, I didn't use any marble shades because I didn't feel like I needed to, and I was trying to shop my stash. It was kind of like a two-in-one. We were trying to dupe the vibes. We 
we were also trying to use some old stuff. I don't know, really. Um, but I did like the recycling of the old lashes. I feel like it was a good way for me to get one last use out of some old rinky-dinky lashes. And I kind of do like this very disheveled eyelash effect. I think it's very doll-like. I do like the overall look and the cohesion. I do like the really pink blush um, tied in with everything else. I feel like with the lip and with the eye being a little bit of a murkier purple that it ended up not looking as crazy as I thought it was going to look. And overall, I'm actually a lot more ecstatic about this whole thing than I thought I was going to be. Obviously, having duped the vibes and feeling like I did a pretty sufficient job getting all the looks that I wanted out of it, um, I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to purchase the collection. I don't think I want it anymore. And um, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied. I'm pretty satisfied with the overall result. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions for me to dupe out or reuse anything deep in my stash, if, uh, if you have any suggestions for me, yeah, I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much again for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.